What's up, everybody? It's Billy Nash. Welcome to episode 18 of my podcast, Luxury Real Estate with me, Billy Nash. We've had a uh, a wild first quarter we talked about last week, and we talked about don't look, you know, it's in the rearview mirror now, so don't dwell on stuff, right? Highlight what you did uh, that makes sense to help your business, and stay focused. So we're kicking off the second quarter And uh, I thought we'd chat a little bit about things that you could be doing in the second quarter, things that I'm doing uh, in the second quarter to maybe sharpen the tools a bit, uh, have you stay in front of your clients or your prospects, your relationships, and also staying relevant, right? Staying relevant is a very important thing uh, when you're running your own business. Because you want to be that person that's on the tip of the tongue of every potential buyer and seller that's in your immediate area, right? When they think about real estate, you want them to think about you. Even if it's just for information to see what's happening in the marketplace, remember, knowledge is power, right? So absorb as much as you can, read stats, and regurgitate uh, as much as you can uh, to your clients. Don't be annoying, but always try to and be relevant Uh, you know, in that real estate conversation or ever conversation, if you're listening to this and you run your own business, stay relevant. Very important. So second quarter kickoff, you know, you know, first quarter's in the rearview mirror. And what I think you should do and what I do is take a deep dive inventory of your relationships, right? You may have some relationships that might not have bear fruit immediately, but it might take a year or two or three for that fruit to be ready to be picked, right? So always stay relevant with that potential client and, and, and you know, in that relationship. You know, this is a long-term game. It's a long-term process. Anybody that thinks they're going to get into this business and then flip a light switch will, will not be long-lived in the industry. And we're seeing a lot of that. I know I've spoke about this in the past, but there has been a tremendous turnover in the first quarter right? It started last fall and there's been a tremendous turnover uh, in the industry. Another thing that I've noticed, and this happens across multiple, multiple categories of business. When I was in the financial services business, every market shift, people move, people change, right? So I've seen a lot of agents jump and ship, go into a competitor because they think the grass is always greener on the other side. That is the biggest crock of shit ever. If you're happy, right? And you were happy when you were doing a bunch of deals and the market might've slowed down and you're not doing as many. Well, guess what? You're still happy. There's no secret weapon. There's no, you know, so sometimes, you know, people move to move, right? I just got in my, at my house, uh, someone that was uh, in our uh, brokerage. I got a, uh, a big mailer that they just sent out at my home and they left to a competitor I did not notice a thing. Just the the logo on the bottom changed, right? So, you know, think those things through. You know, if, if, if your business is slow, you, you know, and you're, you're trying to figure things out right now, it, you know, you know, you get enticed to want to move, right? Because every, you know, everyone's going to have the secret sauce. If you leave, I have the secret sauce. Guess what? You are the sauce right? There is no secret sauce. Work hard, stay focused, and don't be distracted and stay relevant. So what am I doing in the first, in the second quarter uh, to stay relevant? We have a nice, uh, uh, close to $4 million deal closing next week, which, you know, which we, we consummated uh, in the first quarter. So we're excited about closing that one. Um, super excited. The client's awesome and uh, love it. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy for them and, and I can't wait to see their new property uh, uh, when they close next week. So psyched for that for the second quarter. But, you know, I'm trying to create uh, an event uh, to make me stay relevant. And it's also things that interest me because a lot of times your clients, you know, your relationships have the same interests as you, right? It's very interesting how that usually happens, right? You kind of, you know, the reflection or the personality uh, of your client sometimes, you know, with me reflects my personality, right? So that's a very interesting thing. So I particularly like, you know, I I, I like beautiful boats. I like, uh, you know, I I love uh, collector cars, right? And a lot of those things are relevant 
to the luxury real estate business. So they go hand in glove. So if you're talking to a, a prospect or, or, or about, you know, a beautiful uh, a sailing yacht or, or whatever it is, a hundred foot Ferretti uh, or just a sport fisherman, there's a good chance that that owner of that might have a luxury property, right? So it's all entangled between the tentacles of luxury real estate go out far. They touch a lot of different areas. So my point is plan something in the second quarter, put out those tentacles, right? Call it the luxury octopus, right? Reach out with those tentacles, see what they touch, right? It could be luxury, you know, it, 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 it could be luxury travel. It could be a, 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 a collector Ferraris. It could be fine dining. It could be an amazing uh, a wine cellar filled with amazing Pinot Noirs and Cabernets. They, whatever it is, the luxury octopus tentacles go out far, and there's lots of them. So think about it. Take an inventory and plan an event. Plan an event around those tentacles. See what you love to do outside of your real estate business. Remember, because sales, you can be selling without selling. And I think that's important. Remember that. You could be selling without selling. So plan an event. So here's an event that, 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 that we just put on the agenda that uh, it, was, it was my brainchild. Um, I wanted to have an event um, around the car uh, collector market because I'm very close to Craig and Carolyn Jackson. They're very loyal clients and very loyal friends. And Craig is probably one of the, I would say, the most well-known car, uh, 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 you know, enthusiast, auctioneer, expert, probably in the world, right? Craig knows his stuff when it comes to cars. Years, makes, models, values. Awesome, right? So I approached him and I said, hey, Craig, what if we put together just a very small, intimate dinner? right? Not a big crowd, but intimate. So when you're planning something, don't try to be the jack of all trades. Don't try to pull together a hundred people. I went to an event uh, in Palm Beach that somebody invited me to. I thought it was going to be like private with 12 people. It turned out to be 200 people, a financial advisor. It was an absolute fucking shit show. I had no interest. It was 200 people in the room. How's that intimate? Right? I got a cup of coffee and I left. Intimate right? 10, 12 people invited some uh, uh, amazing uh, uh, car collectors, car enthusiasts, because the Palm Beach uh, Barrett Jackson show is coming up in two weeks. So what better time to have a nice intimate dinner uh, and, and, and have Craig as the guest of honor and to talk about cars, right? How cool is that? So my cousin happens to have an amazing detail shop, uh, which uh, actually found him the building a few years ago, and he had a vision uh, to create something here in the Palm Beaches, and he did it. He's now the go-to for anybody that's got an, you know, a, a luxurious, exotic car that wants to get it wrapped, uh, that wants to get it, you know, take it to the next level, you know, pick it up with white gloves. I mean, it's called Rocky's Garage. It's in. It's on Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard. And if you if you're listening to this and you got a badass car, well, stop by and see Rocky. The place is amazing. He transformed it. It's incredible. So you know, so we're inviting some 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 clients. Uh, you know, really relationships and friends uh, to have a nice, small, intimate dinner. And I think that's a great way to stay relevant in front of your relationships. And I don't want to mean to call them clients, right? These are relationships. These are friends, right? That could potentially do business down the road, right? But when you approach your business in a non-threatening way and you're not the ultimate salesman, right? Things happen. Good things happen, right? Remember, you could sell without selling. I think that's key. You could sell without selling. So I'm really fired up about that. So no matter what market you're in, what industry, you know, you know, you know what, you know, what you're focused on, what your hobbies are, in the second quarter, why don't you create a nice 10, 12 person dinner? You, you know, an appreciation dinner for, for you know for being a friend, for having a relationship with us, right? I think that's the way to do it. 
And it doesn't have to be 12 people. You don't have to go and spend $25,000. Pick that accountant that you're working with, the forensic accountant. Pick that, you know, that trust and estate attorney uh, that you do business with, right? Or maybe it's somebody in your community that you never broke bread with. Invite them over, make dinner, right? Who knows? We had some friends over this weekend to watch the big game. And by the way, I am actually, if anybody knows me, I figured I was going to wear my sunglasses for the second half of the podcast. So now I just put them on because we are in mourning for the basketball team. You know, uh, FAU, what a run. Holy shit. Final four. And with three, two, one, eh, the buzz beater to lose. But they did an amazing job. So I don't want to deviate away from what we were talking about. So my point is plan something in the second quarter, right? And again, it doesn't have to be 10, 12, 16, 20 people. Don't lose the intimacy of communication, right? Communication is intimacy. It's, it's, it's being, you know, it's being one-on-one. It's being, you know, it's having a small group. One of the things I, I, I appreciate is when you put some, uh, clients together, they are you, you know like-minded individuals, and things spawn from that. They appreciate that conversations are had, right? And if you do a really good job when they're away from you, they say, and I can guarantee you, what a great dinner this has been. What a great dinner! I really appreciate you know him or her putting this together, right? That to me is powerful. That's powerful. So, super pumped for this dinner on uh, uh, this week. Super pumped for the Barrett Jackson Car Show uh, next week here in the Palm Beaches. If anybody has never been to the car show, it's awesome. Uh, you will see over a hundred million dollars in, in, in cars trade. Uh, last, uh, uh, last, uh, uh, last um, uh, Barrett Jackson in Scottsdale. Uh, I'm pretty sure did set an all time record. So, uh, I think that there's going to be a ton of activity next week. Lots of people at the show. So think about, remember, the luxury octopus, the luxury tentacles, right? Think about those tentacles today, right? Pick one of them of something that you understand that you enjoy, that your clients of like-minded individuals would, would, would enjoy, and put something together, even if it's one-on-one or, 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 or a small lunch, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be fancy schmancy, but do it the right way right? Do it the right way. So take inventory of your relationships and in the second quarter, make it, make it your job to create a nice small event and good things will happen from that. It's good karma. So do that in the month of April. I think, I I, I think uh, it it keeps you fired up. I did hear uh, we had the Palm beach yacht uh, uh, show uh, about two weeks ago here in the Palm beaches. I did hear that it was not, uh, it didn't go as well as it did last year. Another sign of things cooling off. That is a direct correlation to the ultra high net worth individual. And it's a direct correlation to luxury real estate, pricing and activity. You can't have a robust yacht market and have a, and have a luxury real estate market that's, that, that, that's trading down. It just doesn't work. They're all correlated to each other. So uh, that's something that uh, I noticed last week, you know, as an authority in luxury real estate, I look for things outside of my business that can give me signs and clues of what's potentially happening down the road. Again, what I said, pause, more rate hikes, economy slows down. We could be seeing signs of that next quarter's earnings. And then I think we'll be in an environment in 2024 where interest rates will start to come down. Uh, in the election year, which is going to be wild. Uh, and I think things will absolutely 100% pick up. And remember what I always say, right? Right. Stay around the hoop. Stay around the hoop and you get a shot, right? Unfortunately, I wish San Diego State missed that shot on Saturday night, but they didn't. And FAU of Boca Raton lost. Miami got smoked, but Congratulations to both teams. Winners. Florida produces winners. And with that, I think I'll end this podcast. I'll keep it quick. So have a great second quarter. Have a great week. Have a great day. Uh, I will talk to everybody next week on episode 19. I'm going to try to twist Craig's uh, arm and see if I can get him on as a guest next week, uh, right before the show. I can't promise, but I'll work them. Uh, And just remember, you don't have to sell to sell. 
It's an important thing. If you can take anything from this podcast, you don't have to sell to sell. You know, be, you know, you know, you know, have a couple of these events in this quarter and good things will happen. So with that, I just want to thank everybody. This podcast is rocking. It was number six for all luxury real estate, all real estate podcasts in the country, which I love. That's awesome. That means people are downloading it. They're fired up. I've been getting messages from agents all over the country uh, who love the podcast. So if you are listening, share it with your friends, uh, download it. I really appreciate it. Go to Apple or Spotify or anywhere you listen to your podcast. Give me a good rating. Give me five stars. And I love you. And I appreciate it coming at you hard and unscripted. I'll talk to you next week. I love you all. So.